Days passed, months passed, a year passed, and the plantation continued to operate as before. Sometimes Mr. Jones was in charge, sometimes Mr. Johnson was in charge, but the day-to-day -day routine stayed exactly the same. The workers worked hard, long hours every day and still had little to show for it. Every day the meeting would begin with them all reciting the Jones Plantation motto, we work together as free men for our mutual benefit, pledging our allegiance to the Jones Plantation, which stands for prosperity, liberty, and justice for all. One day, Mr. Smith announced, Samuel is asked to say a few words this morning, and whatever the rest of us may think of his ideas and opinions, we are all free here, and that means we are all allowed to speak our mind. So, Samuel, you have two minutes. Begin. Samuel stepped forward, looking scared. I was excited when all this started, he began, glancing nervously at Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones. But don't you all see what's happened here? Nothing has changed. We're all still slaves. There were grumbles of disagreement from the crowd. They tell us what to do and whip us if we don't. They still make all the rules and punish us if we disobey. They let us make suggestions and complain about things, but they never really change anything. They let us choose between Mr. Jones and Mr. Johnson, but what's the difference? The situation stays the same. We do all of the work and they take as much as they want and decide how much they'll let us keep. They live in luxury made rich by the cotton we pick. We do all the work and have to build our own huts, grow our own food, and take care of ourselves. They leave us just enough that we don't revolt or run away. This is not freedom. We're all still slaves. They've only changed the words they use, but nothing else has changed. They say we're all free and equal, but we're not. They command and we obey. That's not freedom. That's not equality. They say we're free to leave, but all that means is that we're free to be someone else's slave. Why should we work or obey the rules? We didn't agree to this. They made the system. They forced it on us. They control and rob us and call it freedom. They've deceived you into thinking that being able to choose which slave master you'll work for is the same as being free. It's not. Open your eyes. If you keep what you produce, they call it stealing. When they take what you produce, they call it sharing and fair distribution. Can't you see that this is all... Your time is up, Samuel, Mr. Smith announced calmly. At his gesture, two supervisors grabbed Samuel by the arms and led him to the whipping post. I'm sorry, Samuel, but you've broken the rule. There are rules against encouraging others not to work and encouraging others to break the rules. You're only hurting all of us with your discontentment and your complaining and your disobedience. The whip fell and Samuel let out a grunt. Without rules, without order, all would be lost. Without law, there would be chaos. We can't just behave as wild animals, each doing whatever he pleases. We must all follow the plan and all do our duty for the betterment of everyone. And those who do not must be punished. The whip fell again and blood flowed freely from Samuel's back. Samuel, it is you who are stealing from the others. When you don't do your assigned work, you are making more work for others. When you disobey the rules, it is you who are endangering the future of everyone else here. You are the thief. You are the criminal. You are the one trying to destroy the arrangement that keeps us all safe and prosperous. At every lash of the whip, the other workers cheered louder and louder, some yelling curses at Samuel. Being spoiled and selfish, you complain about everything, talking as if you're oppressed. But you are the one ruining things. You are the one keeping us from being all we could be. It is your greed and your rebelliousness that is hurting all of us. They all play by the rules, Mr. Smith said, gesturing at the others. What makes you think that you don't have to? You think you're above the law? There were loud yells of agreement as the whip fell again. We must maintain order, Mr. Smith proclaimed, to make this plantation great, to make it so that we can all be happy and prosperous. To have the society we want, there have to be rules. We all have to contribute our fair share to this great endeavor, and we cannot tolerate actions and attitudes that seek to undermine the amazing things that together as free men we have achieved and will continue to achieve. Mr. Jones was smiling as he gave Mr. Smith a pat on the back. The crowd was cheering so loudly that none of them had noticed that Samuel had died.